They step into the biggest shows with the biggest names. And sometimes they get written on or off in a moment's notice. It's time to find out all the dramatic details of what it's like to be a guest star. With your host, Pete Ferrero. Because <laughs> it's nice to meet you too. This is very exciting. Um, I've been watching you my whole life. So. Oh my <laughs> yeah. goodness. That is you've, so cool. You've been in so many things that everybody loves. Um, do you, do you, this is just start, start off the bat. Do you get this thing where you do the conventions and all that stuff and people are like, oh my, oh my God, I know you from, the, like, what is the thing that, that is the most popular because you have so many things. So I can't even imagine what is the one that like. The one that, that I get asked most about. Yeah. Well, I actually, there's two, there's okay. two. Um, The first one, of course, is Ghostbusters. Of course. Um, that's yeah. like a given. And <laughs> right. then, the second one is the Brady Bunch. I mean, everybody, I never really get asked about Charles in charge too often. Um, I mean, they all remember me from it, but I mostly get asked about those too. Isn't that funny? It is interesting. And I can't wait to ask you about the Brady Bunch, but um, all right, let's start here. Where, what me, how did you get into acting? I, um, God, this is the funniest story because I, I was just a really shy kid and my um my neighbor I used to walk her dog and she was a casting director and I'm just like 13 or 14 years old and she um she said to my mom one day she said Jennifer's such a nice girl but she doesn't talk <laughs> where were you by the where is this where is this oh, in this Cal was when we had first moved to California I'm you're in California this is LA yeah, yeah okay yeah so we I lived in the Midwest and on the East Coast and after my dad passed away I was 12 and we moved to California and so I was walking this neighbor's dog and and she said we have got to do something about Jennifer <laughs> she doesn't talk I think she's so sweet whatever so my mom said well Ruth thinks she should go in this acting class and that's an idea you know, here's here's first, someone who doesn't talk let's throw her into it <laughs> let's throw her on screen right <laughs> yeah and I went and I went okay <laughs> <laughs> I think because you know I grew up you know I had a kind of funny well I did not have the most tragic childhood other people I'm sure, sure. had, but I had a pretty crazy childhood so my escape was always television and and movies and and so the thought of oh well that might be kind of fun well I'll go I'll go and I'm just gonna watch everybody I I don't know if I'm gonna really do it so yeah. I I went to the class and the teacher just makes you get right up there and she got me up there on camera and I'm like oh my god and I, I went back and I started just taking classes. And when I was 17, a casting director came to um, talk to the class about acting and what the business was like. And he watched my scene and he brought me in on a soap opera. And that's how I got started. I just, it's kind of like the reluctant actress. <laughs> like, no, it's I funny because there's probably some there. people that you were friends with in that class that are striving and wanting to go on this big journey. And you Well, just... and some who, who have, you know, and-, and Oh, some, really? Like, yeah. yeah, like Kevin Nealon, Kevin Nealon, the comedian, he was in class with me and I loved Kevin. But yeah, there were other, um, you know, kids in class that, you know, went on to do soaps and and things like that. So it so was So how just old were you when you did the soap? How old were you when you, it was another was, world that you did? Yeah. I was 19, 18, 19. And like, what is that to walk into that universe? <laughs> horribly, <laughs> like, dude, it's like so intimidating. <laughs> you know, I, I, uh, I'm still a newbie. I had done one little low budget horror movie called To Wall a Good Night. And right. I mean, never thought anybody would see that thing, you know. And so I, this was my first big job. And here I am working with all these, you know, veteran actors. And, you know, um, I mean, we had... Morgan Freeman was on our show, you know, the incredible, incredible actors. And um, I right. just felt like it was almost like my college, you know? So yeah, I just tried to, you know, keep up and watch and learn and, you know, do Did the you best learn a lot on Another World? Do you feel that you learned 
acting through the soap in a way? I do. I, I, I do think the soaps definitely, they're very difficult to do. I don't care what anybody says. It's not. Oh, I imagine. It's uh, live. It's it's in a way, right? It's not live, live, but it's it's you need to know it, right? And every day is an hour show. So, you know, you really, mm. you really, you work hard. And um, I did learn a lot. I, I, I learned how to listen. I learned, you know, timing. I learned lots of things for the actors on that show. And I just, um, I'm very blessed I had that experience. Yeah, so. totally. And so you're going from show to show. How are you, what is your life like in that time period to get roles and whatnot? Well, um, you know, it's just a lot of auditioning. I was very lucky because I kept very busy for many years that I wasn't out of work for too, too, too long in between. But when I was, I worked. I had, I'd always have a part-time job because <laughs> I just never trusted, you know? Well, I was going to ask you about that. Like, you know, a lot of people that I talk to, you know, it's so interesting. They're in huge, huge projects, but as they're doing the project, they assume they're never going to work. <laughs> they're never going to work again. And they will never have another job again. So did you yeah. did you experience some of that as you were working? Yes. I just, I, every time a show ended, you know, and you, you, it's very hard when a show ends and you've become a family and, and th that has become your little unit, you know? So um, whenever I would be done, it, it's a little mourning period for a while. And I would just make sure I kept busy and, and, you know, do whatever I could to just, Keep the money rolling in because you just can't trust this business for well, anything. What, what what kind of things were you doing though? Like, what were you work? Where were you working in between? I worked at a store called Geary's in Beverly Hills, and I was a, a, I worked in the phone orders up in the in the office, and then I also worked the floor and sold you know sold to customers, and I had some two very funny experiences doing <laughs> that. Um, I had just finished this pretty big movie of the week that this big casting director had cast me in and, and, and there, <laughs> there he comes walking in the store and he's like Jennifer it's so good to see you and I'm like thinking oh, that he's so he's running into you at the store you're both there and, then, and, then I, and I said what can I help you find <laughs> like, and I'm like yeah I work here and he, he's like that is awesome I said well <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do with myself if I wasn't, so. <laughs> right, yeah. Totally. And then the second fun experience yeah. was um, not someone who recognized me, I, at least I don't think she did, but Carrie Fisher walks in and I, you know, we all love Carrie Fisher. Everybody. And and I, of course, what's going on? I'm going to help Carrie Fisher today. So I go up and I help, you know, what can I do for you? And she said, I, I need some gifts and will you help me? And I'm like, of course I will, you know. So I'd take her around and show her all the different things we were selling. And and she'd go, you like that? And I'd like, I do. Okay, three of them. And I reached this the store. Oh my God, that's amazing. It's just the cutest. And then her credit card got declined. Uh, of course. Oh, <laughs> that's, it was, it was that's an episode of something. That's I know. an episode of something I right I there. I was thinking, I can't go out there. I told my manager, I can't go out there and tell Carrie Fisher her car got declined. <laughs> no. Uh, you Have you ever thought about a film about your experiences making films? I think that there is something, oh. <laughs> I think there is something there. I, I, people would either be very bored or very entertained. <laughs> Well, okay, but you get this, you get the hugest movie in the world, you know, I mean, and the fan base for that, for Ghostbusters is, whew, it's wild, you know, right. you know what I mean? Like, it's a, it's a whole other level. Tell yeah. me how you got that, and then we'll all talk about the whole experience of making that. I know there's a lot of people that will be happy. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Um, you know, I just came in for an audition, and they put me on tape, and I never heard anything. I thought, oh, and I thought it would be cool to be in a Bill Murray movie, you know, and because who didn't love Stripes and, you know, all those movies. And um, and then I got a call like weeks and weeks later and I had gotten the part and I was so excited. So I went to New York and did that with Steven Tosh and we were the cover set. So we were there for, oh my gosh, we were there for three weeks, I think, in New York before we even filmed anything. Um, covers shot, you probably know, but if, for those who don't, a cover, um, a cover set is for when it rains. So they were right. going to be outside, but if it rained, they were coming in to do the, the, the test seat. 
I got you. So, yeah, so I had a I had just moved from New York. So here I was back in New York for like three weeks. It was kind of fun to see all my friends again. <laughs> right. Then they were like, you just left. You didn't, you, you, I know. Not that exciting, right? That, yeah. was, that wasn't very long. <laughs> so so what was Bill Murray like then? Oh, he's so fun. He's um, he's just a lot of fun to be around. Um, I spent a great day with him and Stephen and I, and we just laughed. And it was awesome. I I, I got to say, I was so sad when it was over. You know, it was yeah. just a fun experience to you know be in the same room with all of these geniuses and and they were very very helpful and fun to work with you're aware that there's like a documentary about all these great bill murray stories right like bill murray yeah, showed I up at this my friend did that movie i haven't seen it yet Tom, tommy <laughs> Avaloni. <laughs> tommy yes i love those guys I, i'm friendly with them as well uh, and I'm friends with the executive producer of that, Ray Esposito. He said to say hello. So, oh, please tell him like, hello. <laughs> I will. Um, but so, did you have anything like that? Any like interesting, quirky Bill Murray things that he that oh. he did? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so he. So I'm doing Charles in charge, and I I I get a call that um I come into work one day, and and I hadn't worked the day before, and they're like, Bill Murray was here. I'm like, what? Because he was looking for you. <laughs> Why? <What? laughs> oh my God. So my agent calls me and she goes, Bill Murray's been calling about you. And I said, okay, why? And she goes, he doesn't like your headshots. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you want me to do? And she goes, nothing. I love your headshots. So I said, okay, that's all he wanted? And she goes, well, no, I think he wants to, 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 to see you, to go out to dinner with you. And I, I did. I went out to dinner with the just dinner right but we're, well i have to ask you know <laughs> yeah. yeah all innocent but we we went out and we're at this restaurant down in downtown la and it, it, i think it was philippe's and they he was singing opera to the whole you know restaurant and and then he says jen grand central's right or union stations right across the street let's go look at the trains and i'm like Okay, so we go, <laughs> and, and this, you know, we probably can't even get near a train now, but. Uh, right, this is before, this is when you can go and do anything. This is when you can kind of, you can get in the airport without security, probably. You could board um, a plane just because you feel like it. Like, it's yeah, just like yeah, you're back exactly. in the day, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, yeah. um, so we, we're walking around and there's an Amtrak train sitting right there and the door's open and he climbs in and this guy comes walking up and he goes can we drive your train <laughs> he goes okay so <laughs> this is insane only only a few feet only yeah. a few feet but it, i thought that was pretty humorous so but that's like a really good out to dinner with bill murray story <laughs> yeah. did you change your did you change your headshots no <laughs> But you know yeah. what's fascinating about that is Charles in Charge it was years later. It was not like I did Ghostbusters and it I I did Ghostbusters and then I did the pilot for Charles in Charge and, and then the movie came out and then I, the series started filming. I got you. Do you know what I mean? There was a little downtime from when I did Ghostbusters till it came out and I had done the pilot and then for I Charles and Charles. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I wasn't supposed to be um a series regular on that i was just a guest spot for the pilot but they but you're so good well they were so sweet to <laughs> you know, i'm sorry you so know. Flattered. <laughs> you're so amazing that you have to be a regular on everything that you oh. do <laughs> oh my gosh thank you sorry that's just my thing i have to tell you these things <laughs> well thank you thank you um i saw an interview you did on the merv griffin show have you seen that in a long time <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I get I get thrown that at me every once in a while. <laughs> well, that was some awkward sauce. Like, I mean, you 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 talk about before, you know, you were kind of quiet, and so it's probably easy for you to be an actor in a way, like you can become something. But when you go on the Merv Griffin show, you have to be you, right? So, was that an intimidating process for you to go on a show like that? It was the first. Well, maybe I'd done other interview mm -hmm. things, but I mean, this was Merv Griffin. I, I huge, I, yeah, yeah. Was shaking in my shoes, and <laughs> I, I literally, if you 
hear my voice. It's so soft because I was so nervous. I also talked very much softer then, but um, oh, I just loved it. He was so sweet to me. I got bumped the first time, um, but it was so worth it because it, it was because of Don Rickles. <laughs> he, <laughs> well, he was the uh, act yeah. ahead of me. And, and he, he wouldn't have tolerated so, anything else. So you were. You, <laughs> and he totally was so hilarious that, you know, how that goes and they keep him on. And yes, Jennifer, we're going to have to have you back. And I'm like, OK, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so at least I had the a little pre game Merv. So when I went back, I kind of knew, OK, that's the room I'll be in before I go on, you know. Oh, you had some experience with it a little bit. I had like, a little nerve experience before I actually got on the show. All right. So, so, but in that interview, you get into this whole conversation about, it's, it's interesting because I'm going to ask you about it because you get into this whole thing about weight and mm. I'm curious, was that, we're talking about the early eighties now and we're looking at things years, years later. Mm -hmm. Was there a pressure like that for you in the... Mm -hmm. Tell me about some of that. And what there was, I, you know, and I grew up kind of a chubby girl. I was not, I was just a chubster. I was awkward and I was shy. And I, one summer I just, I grew up, you know, and shot up a little bit and lost some weight. And um, when I started in the business, um, even then they're like, you really need to lose more weight. And I'm, I was not a big girl anymore, but you know, that was, that was what they wanted then. And they, they may say not, not anymore, but they do. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I was constantly, when I was on the soap, um, our producer at the time, he used to make me and a couple of the other, well, a lot of the other girls, uh, he'd weigh us. Oh my God. Yeah, that was pretty crappy, but um, I, I, yeah, I struggled with that. And the funniest thing is now when, if something of mine is on and I happen to catch it or, you know, I'm like, oh, oh, I was, that's me. <laughs> and I look and I'm like, God, there was nothing wrong with me. Um, I look like a normal human being. And I just, that, that was part, probably one of the biggest things I disliked about um, that, that, that was probably the most uncomfortable thing for me in my career is because I wasn't, I was an hour, I have an hour, I have a, you know, what do you call it? A... <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, you're beautiful. You're because absolutely beautiful. I have an hourglass figure. I do. I'm a girl. And you're I'm, I'm beautiful then and today as well. And, well, and, thank you. and I grew thank up you. like being a super fan of all of it. So I, that makes me annoyed that somebody would ever speak that way to you because uh, it's just, it's just, I could tell you as a, a, a teenager that grew up watching you, none of us felt that way. We were all into well, it. So, thank you. Yeah. And it, but you know what? It, it, it really um, taught me a lesson. And that lesson was I knew I was fine then. And I didn't trust it. You know what I mean? I didn't mm. fight for myself. And I, I just went, you know what? You fight for yourself. You got to stand up for yourself and say, this is who I am. And if you, if you want a size zero person, well, you're not going to get it here. So, you know. But that must have been difficult but, and hard to get to. You know, that's a, we're talking about hard. this a long time mm -hmm. ago, you know. It is hard. And it's hard to be judged all the time. But, you know, you have to have a thick skin. And it's not that it's not going to hurt you, but you have to learn how to let things roll off you. And that is a hard thing to, to place to get to. It's interesting because I, br I bring it up because it's like, you know, when you watch that interview, you're so nervous. And the thing that you talk about is this, this thing that- The most painful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're here, Mark Griffin is doing his best to sort of like talk about it with you, but yeah. it's a- Well, I just, I, I started talking about this at that, you know, yeah. after so, because I, I was really tired. I, did, I just didn't want anyone else to feel like I did. And so I brought it up and I'm, you know, um, I'm like most people in the world, you know? Um, you were friendly, I'm sure in the eighties with other actresses of the time. Was it talked about amongst you guys? Like, especially that weighing situation at, at, at the- well, uh, No, because they were all freaking 
fucking zeros, Peter. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, they didn't care. Yeah. Well, they couldn't relate, you know. And then, and for me, for a part of that time, it was embarrassing, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people think you're fat. <laughs> well, I mean, that, or at least, at least that's your percep, like this small group's perception of that, whether that's yeah. true. Or, yeah. You know. Yeah. So after you do Ghostbusters, is it? How does your life change? Because that's. I think it's interesting to go from being someone who's working on a soap and a couple of things and the fall guy and all those kinds of pieces, which are really great, amazing stuff. But then you get catapulted sort of in this movie that becomes iconic and you have a bunch of those. So that's what we'll get to. But the first one is Ghostbusters. How did that change your life? Well, I think it opened a few doors for me because people wanted to meet me. You know, yeah. as far as for the as far as acting or you know being cast and things, and I did. You know, I'm sure that brought me in in a few doors. Um, I honestly did not um, notice a big thing then. It's so, more. I mean, are you getting recognized? Like the store that you worked at, you can't probably work out anymore. I mean, you're you're the. You oh, know, you were in, yeah, you were in Ghostbusters. <laughs> like, oh, how no, do you... no, I worked there after. You did. You worked there after Ghostbusters. That's pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah. I worked until 1993, 94. That is so amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, how can I meet her? Oh, <laughs> just just go to the store. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, so, but did it change? Did you get recognized more when you started going to places? And Yeah. I mean, I, I yes, I definitely, when I was on the soap and, and, and another world, another world, go, Ghostbusters, Charles in Charge, sure. I got a lot of um, recognition from that, you know, and people would recognize me, but it's really been since the internet, like after I kind of retired to have my children and then I had to go on the internet because my kids were, and I'm like, well, you're not going out without me. So <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden I'm like, who are these people that want to friend me on this Facebook thing? <laughs> they all love you. No- <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I had no idea. And I don't think a lot of people that maybe have left the business, you know, um, until the internet blew up, right. That y- you think anyone remembers you, you know, it's. I can't even imagine that you feel that way, but I understand that you do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like- <laughs> well, I moved too a lot. You know, I, I, yeah. I left California and went to Idaho and Oregon. Right. You know, my husband and I travel around a lot. He he's he's in the film and TV industry, but he um, also his passion is basketball. So he was coaching women's basketball. Mm. So we kind of left Hollywood so he could coach, and and I was a coach's wife. <laughs> oh. and so we had like a really we've had a really normal, crazy life outside of that business. Did your husband know you from any of these movies? Oh. He just ran into you, or whatever. However, you guys met. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did a movie of the week called uh, "Dreams of Gold" with Mel, um, uh, Cliff Robertson, and Loretta Swit, who are the most. Uh, Loretta's like my mom. I mm-hmm. love her. Um, and I met Todd on that movie, and that's history. Nineteen eighty-six, and we're still. Oh, that's amazing! Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Um. Okay, so let's talk about. I want to talk about the Brady Bunch because yes. there's a lot of other things I want to talk about that's before that, but I, this is important because okay. how do you, okay, you get this part. Tell me how you got Cindy Brady. I mean, and and it's a big iconic role to walk into. So yeah. she, I guess the actress, oh, Susan Olsen, I think, uh-huh. right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She was not agreeing to go back to it. What is your involvement? How do you, how do you okay, find so out? What- about- what, how, through how, your life yeah yeah okay so I get a call that they'd like me to do play Cindy Brady and I'm like yeah and my agent and my, no first mate she goes well you know you don't want to do that and I went yes I do <laughs> I want to be a Brady <laughs> he's not Why knowing yeah. what my childhood was like <laughs> right <Yeah. laughs> so to be a Brady was like are you kidding me I yes so um so I I I I did it and I loved it I had so much fun and Susan um Susan had gotten married and she was going on a honeymoon but she was going to do the show but they didn't nego- the negotiations didn't didn't go work. well 
for her. Yeah. yeah. So I think she wanted a little more than what they were willing to give. I mean, she'll tell you the whole story. In, in, fairness, to, in, fairness, in fa fairness to Susan, I'm sure she thought there's no way they're going to go forward with the Brady Bunch movie without Cindy Brady. Well, you would think that that would have been... It's, it's a fair point. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And and I... I Oh, my gosh. So, so the funny story with this. So I did it, right? And now, the f other kind of thing that marries this together with me and Christopher Knight is Christopher played my love interest on Another World. So now we're brother and sister, which is really crazy. <laughs> right. But I do this show, and... A couple of years go by and I'm down in LA with my kids um, and I go into a Burger King I think Susan says it's a Burger King and I'm sitting there with my kids and my sister-in-law and her kids and I look over and I'm like oh my god that's Susan Olson oh my god that's Susan Olson I have to say something but now, it was like, had you prior to this had you had you known Susan Olson? You just took the you did Cindy Brady. You never don't know what she thought of it. You don't know it. You have no information to go on. All you know is that the role that all you I took know is I watched the show and, and the I iconic the actress and that you replaced <laughs> is sitting right at the Burger King. Yeah, okay, yeah. set that up. Yeah. So so I I'm like and of course my hair's up and up, no <laughs> makeup. I look like crap. And, but I'm like, I have to say, I may never run into this girl again. I have to say something. So I went up to her and I went, Susan, hi, you don't know me. My name is Jennifer Runyon and I played you on the Christmas and, and I cannot believe I, I don't want to bother you. And she goes, are you freaking kidding me? And she gives me this <laughs> big hug and, and, oh, I love her so much. And she's one of my really good friends. And we did a podcast together for a while with Willie, my friend, my friend, Willie, and um, I just love her. She's a great, great person. That's so fascinating yeah. to have that happen and become friends with the, a very iconic role. Yeah. Well, yeah. before you walked into that, it's big, the, the big shoes. I mean, that's a big, big show. You knew probably yes. that you would be judged that you're oh. not Cindy, you know, and that, that you're stepping in. I always thought you did a wonderful job as Cindy. I, I remember yeah. as a kid saying, I. <laughs> She, you were really great. I, not better than, but oh, I thought you, it was amazing to see. Oh, there was nobody else that could have probably done that. Oh, well, thank but you how much? Me. What was that like for you to walk into that? Oh my gosh, that was so surreal and so cool, and I loved them all, and and they treated me so well and welcomed me, and you know, I just I just had the best time. I mean, it, what a fun! Can you imagine? I walk on set and here I am in the living room. I'm in the Brady living room and there's mom and Ted Brady and there's Alice. And I'm like, and here's me. You are in your favorite TV show or maybe one of your favorite. Oh, yes. You know what I mean? You are sitting, you are standing in your, one of your favorite television shows that had to be surreal for you. It was crazy good. Crazy. Yeah. And I but love that I did it. Did you put any pressure on yourself about being Cindy or did you just go in and no. just do it? No, yeah. I couldn't, I could, I, you know, I kept thinking, okay, you're just going to be Christmas Cindy. That's it. That's, you're, you're Christmas Cindy. And that's what Susan calls me. She calls me Christmas Cindy. I'm not a fake. That's a great a name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's really awesome. So, yeah. I'm Christmas Cindy. Yeah. But um, no, I didn't. Cause I don't, what could I do? I mean, I just thought, just have fun, you know? Yeah. And, and I did, I had a great time. That's amazing. And the, all the other, well, it was at the uh, point where you were like, I'm doing this with Bobby Brady. And like, I don't, under, like, it must be, you know, I don't understand. <laughs> really weird. It's yeah. really weird, especially when you've grown up watching a TV show your whole life. And, and that was your escape. You know, I always yeah. dreamed to have a family, you know, like yeah. that. So. The Brady Bunch. Yeah. Um, sure, okay. Yeah, so Charles in Charge is iconic. Another big thing that you did. Tell me about walking into that role. I mean, and like that show now, you know, there's a lot of drama with that show all these years later, Scott Baio's. Where, where are you on all of that? And what was that experience like for you being on that show? Well, <clears throat> doing the show, you know, I'd never done a sitcom before. I loved comedy. I, I, I think that's my favorite um, genre mm. and um scott and willie were just 
so terrific for me. They, they helped me so much. They, I, you know, I learned a lot with timing and, you know, pacing with comedy and, and it was just a great experience. And it's just unfortunate. It's unfortunate that all of this happened. And I, I don't know anything because um, I wasn't on that set. I was on it for two episodes when they brought me back, but you know, I, I didn't, I didn't. How would you know or know what the someone else's experience would be? Yeah, like I, 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 and I wasn't close to the girls, you know, because they were a lot younger than me. But, um, but you know, it's just unfortunate. And I, again, I don't know anything. And right, you know, so everybody has their own sort of version of what happened to them. Yeah, I just don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't even know a story. You right. Know? <laughs> right. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and Willie's my. Willie's my best friend and yeah. um, you know, he was there, but he, he doesn't even, he's like, look, I don't, I don't know. They didn't. Right. I mean, and there's no way to know the only, the only people that know are the two people that, right. you, you know, and so that's, that's right. That, yeah. I just uh, go ahead. think it's sad. The whole thing is sad. You know? Well, it's sad because it's an iconic show that we all grew up with and you would want sort of like, the legacy of that to stand on its own and be able to just talk about remember Charles in charge oh my god this was so great that was so great but now it's sort of like marred in some sort of controversy and you don't even know if it should be great because it's yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's sad it's just <sighs> well I'm going to ask you about 90210 I do a podcast about that as well um, yeah. and so you come on to Beverly Hills 90210 and I'm going to so you were just talking about the girls on Charles in Charge. And this is another show with, you walk into this show and it's iconic and huge and big. What was that like for you? And what were the girls like on that show? <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny question. Yeah. Um, I didn't work with any of the girls, um, but I've met, I met them all and they were all super cool to me. Um, I had so much fun with Ian. He's a great guy. I mean, it was a it was a fun shoot. It's really always awkward and uncomfortable to walk on um, a set that they've been on, you know, on for a number of years, and you're just a guest spot for that because you know it's it's a family, it's a unit, and sometimes when you come on as a guest, you know, it, you know, you might not um, feel all the the love or the warmth, but they were terrific to me and. Um, I had a really good time on that show. I had a lot of fun. Do you get recognized? Do, 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 do people bring that up to you a whole bunch too? Because you play this sort of... Yes. I don't, even know, I don't even know what to call her, but she's... They hated me. They did hate you. <laughs> it's not a likable character. No, it's kind of yeah. a witch. Yeah. With a capital B. I mean, I didn't, I'm just not going to say the word, thank you. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. But uh, was it fun to play something like that? Loved it. <laughs> yeah. loved it I never um, got too many bad girl roles so that was one of them for sure yeah um well what about Luke Perry did you get any uh any time with Luke at all during that and an angel from God mm -hmm. yeah and Jason they're just they're all delicious they're just so one they're just really good human beings I mean, that's the experience I had. I loved them all. And I thought my favorite of the girls, I mean, they're all, they were all very super nice to me, but Tori Spelling is just about the sweetest person. I just love her. I agree. I agree with that. Um, yeah. Well, the girls on, you said you didn't really talk to the girls on Charles in Charge. What was your experience like with them? I, you know, I, like I said, I, I literally never had any scenes with them, but one time, one scene I had uh, is when I enter into the house. I don't know what the last name of this this new family was, but um, so when you're off, off set behind the door, and Nicole and I were back there, and she hadn't really said anything. She's a kid. I mean, she was right. pretty young, but I have to say, I've never seen anybody more beautiful. Yeah. And she was pretty shy and or, I don't know, she wasn't really talking to me. And I just finally went, you know, I just have to tell you something. And she goes, what? And I said, I've been, a, I've seen a lot of beautiful girls in this business, but you are absolutely stunning. 
and don't ever let anyone take advantage of you. You know, I just said some kind to her because I just, she was young. I mean, she was she 13 or 14 yeah. or I don't even know. And she was like, and I thought, oh, you know, she's just, she just needs a little love or something. I don't know. And then yeah. after that, she was super sweet to me. And I mean, not that she wasn't before. I just, she I just think wasn't I talking to you. I, yeah, exactly. I, yeah. Nice. I felt like maybe I'm the adult here. I need to break the ice. So it's interesting. So, um, but it was true what I said. <laughs> oh, I believe you. I believe that. I believe that you you felt that way. And Shannon, I was walking down the hall, and she was walking down. And she goes, "I love you, and Charles in charge." And I went, "Thank you." So that was it. That was like the only interaction. Except Tori actually came and found me um, to welcome me, which I thought was super generous and kind. And you know, you wouldn't maybe expect that from her, but she is super sweet. And we and I've heard that so many times over and over yeah. that Tori yeah. was a welcoming person and and Luke as well would come to a guest star and say, Hey, how are you? You know, welcome yep. to our welcome to our set, like welcome to our family in a way. Yes. It's lovely when you have that experience. It is. So what is it like sort of being on all these I and these all these iconic shows and um in this time period? Like you must be Obviously, they love you for the reason that you're so talented and so good in everything that you oh do. <laughs> but, but like you can be trusted in in these in these parts to come onto nine hundred two to be in a Charles in Charge, right? Yeah, I, you know, I I really had so much fun in 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 my whole run that I did, and I got to work with some amazing people. Uh, Jason Bateman, I did. Um, I think it was called Hogan's Family. That's right, Valerie. Or, yeah. I did, yeah, it was yeah. Valerie and then it was Hogan's family. And I did an episode of that and he was great. And so I I, I always felt like, how blessed am I? <laughs> I mean, how, how, how is this happening to me? I guess that's how I want to explain this because I felt like I was constantly in another world, you know, like, oh, now I'm doing this. Oh my God, I used to watch this. I used to watch James Garner on television all the time. Oh my God, now he's going to play my father in a movie. Right. You know, and, and you know, you just, I, I was just blown away all the time because I'm a Midwest girl. I'm from the Midwest. I'm not a, I didn't, you know, grow up in this business. So um, it was just, it's been a really, it was really fun. I had a really, really good, good experience in my career. Um, you know, there's always your little downfalls or your little, you know, like my, the weight thing was not sure. a fun thing to deal with, but um, that was the worst thing that ever happened to me. What about the George Burns movie? Oh, 18 again. 18 again. I mean, and like, that's, that's amazing because talking about, oh my God moments, I'm working with these people. I mean, yeah. it's a movie where George Burns is like in the movie. I don't know that you yeah. I don't know that you interacted with him all that much because you interacted with Charlie. George, yeah. George, yeah, George Burns' younger self. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah. uh what was that like to be in that film? Oh, oh my gosh. That was Paul Flattery was our director, and I just he's amazing. You know, the, these are all the second city people, you know, that were a lot of them were that that were second city um, you know, actors um uh, were in this film too. And um, it was just great. I mean, I got to work with George and he was just very funny, very sweet and um, adore Charlie. Charlie's still one of my good friends. And uh, I just did a movie a couple years ago with him, but that you'll never see, I'll never see the light of day. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but we had, we sure had fun, but we all, we all bailed, but um, we sure had fun. <laughs> that happens, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, we can make a movie about that. <laughs> okay, that's fair <laughs> enough, yeah. <laughs> um who's the boss is another show that you 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 went on what was what was that set like oh that was that was again I had fun on these shows there was only a couple things that I that I did that I'm like oh my god I'm glad that was over but a lot <laughs> of the sitcoms were really fun you know the energy was pretty good on those um Alyssa I Milano I did a couple pilots that I'm in and, and the pilots are odd because you know there's a lot of pressure for the producers and for the network and you know they're trying to sell it and so they're uber you know yeah. as they should be they're on they're on edge they want to make a good show so it's not as quite as 
peaceful of a set, maybe, if that makes any sense. It does. That's the feeling I would always get on a pilot. Some, some pilot. There's so. a lot of pressure because they're trying. It's, it's not just about you. It's about like we want this to go to, to you know, to, to shoot and all this stuff. Yeah. And, and every but every little thing is sort of like uh overlooked or, or like looked into yeah. too much sort of right yeah 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 it can be like that and so that can be that can be stressful and you know oh my god I hope I'm doing a good job or they you know because they can replace you in a minute you know so you do as an actor you think about all those things uh, especially you know on a pilot you know you're always worried about that I want to leap <sighs> so good my favorite show and you're in that too I still can't believe I I was that lucky. Um, you know, that was that was just a, quite an experience um, working with all those people. And uh, Scott Bakula and Dean Stockwell, they're just terrific. And the whole cast that I work with them, um, um, Lydia Cornell, mm -hmm. who was uh, on, what was the name of her show? That, What's the name of her show? I don't know. <laughs> With Donna, I I'll know the name of it. I feel so bad. Oh, oh, too is it too close for comfort? No. Yes, thank yeah. you. Yeah. I, know, yeah. I know it too. Yeah, she's so but amazing. I love her. She's yeah. so sweet. Yeah. And she played like my best friend on that show. And so I got to meet Lydia and I just adore her. She's she's terrific. Um yeah, that was a fun one. That was a real fun one. I mean, it was fun like, to uh, play. I love playing, um, doing old, you know. Yes, that's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, it's not of this time kind of a thing, yes. right? Period, sort of, yeah. I did a movie in Israel called A Man Called Sarge. And I played a part, and it's my favorite part I've ever played. And um, it, it, it's on Netflix. I think it's still on Netflix. I'm not I'm sure. I'm going to go look for it tonight. Oh, you should. <laughs> it's called A Man Called Sarge, and it's with Gary Kroger, um, and uh, Mark Singer is in it with me, and I play a French spy named Fifi Laou, nice. and it is very fun. It's my well, I think it's fun because I had the most fun I've ever had on a set. Making I just, I, yeah. I, I loved it. I wish I could be Fifi again. <laughs> well, maybe they'll make a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um. So you step away from acting. That's a big choice. I mean, you've been doing this since you were a kid. You went through a, a whole decade of iconic role after iconic role. I mean, and also in the 90s, too, because 90210 is the 90s. So it was continuing. What made you, was it kids? What, 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 what I mean, because you could have kids in that era and still come back to work. So there must have been a choice at some point to say, I'm I'm good, you know? Yeah, well, we, we just had a couple of decisions to make. You know, my husband wanted to keep coaching. Um he did. He was coaching at a at a, a university in California. Um, and then when season was over, he'd work on a movie or a TV show. And he was going to leave that job. And he said, "I really still want to coach." And I said, "Well, I really want to be a mom, and I really want to be home with my kids." And so we did. We we made that choice to um, leave California and we moved to Idaho. That's and di that's a different place. It's, it not, is. It's, it's not Los Angeles. It's a different no, place. No, yeah. it, it was totally different world and peaceful. And um, I loved it. And we lived there six years. Then we lived in Oregon for a few years while he coached there. And then we came back to California because our, our, our family, you know, the parents were getting older and mm. we just felt like, you know, we need to go home. We need to, we need, our kids need to be around their grandparents and we need to, we just need to be home with our family for a while. And we're grateful we did. We're grateful we did. But it's it was so worth it. I mean, I loved being home with my kids. I loved, I'm fortunate that I could do that. And yeah. I'm, you know, glad that that happened because, yeah, they're good kids. What was the podcast they're that you and Susan Olson were doing? I didn't see that so anywhere. Oh, what? Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Susan Olson, Willie Ames, and I did a podcast called Fluid. Okay. Oh, that sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that was fun. Yeah, totally. Um, and then, but you did come back to acting because I've seen the, in IMDb that you've done some stuff, right? Yeah, I did a couple of little things for friends, and um, you know, I'm not back, but. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> but if my fr a friend said, hey, Jen, would you do this? I'd be like, of course I'd do that for you. So so I've done that kind of thing where friends are doing a project and, and so I'll what, go what are you doing today besides mom and all that stuff? Like what can people find you doing and talking about? Are you doing a podcast now or what's what's no, going on? yeah, no, 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 not now. That was a lot, that's a lot of podcasts is a lot of work, <laughs> you know. It yeah. is. And Billy and I talk about it all the time. Like we should do another one. So we had we loved doing a podcast together. We had so much fun. Yeah. Um, but it's just a lot, it is. And and Tom and I are retired now, we're traveling and and right now I'm getting ready to have a wedding here at my house. My son is getting married in June. So I've been busy with that kind of stuff. Okay. So and, there's no uh, website to follow that. <laughs> you're, well, you know, usually you're plugging something. No, yeah. <laughs> no. Like a, no yeah. I have nothing to plug. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I just think the world of you, I think you've, you've done so much great work and so many Thank people you. were so excited when I said I was interviewing you because they just they all shouted something out. You know what I mean? Oh, and, and it's always so different. Like, like you said, like Charles in Charge or Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters is the most popular, I think. But, uh, yeah. you know, then the Cindy Brady thing and all of that stuff. So it's just, it's uh, it's a testament to how incredible of an actor that you were. And oh, thank you. That you were able to just, because it's not easy to be in, it's hard to be in one iconic thing, right? But to be in several of them. It's pretty awesome. Yes. And now <laughs> yeah. I have a now I have a daughter who's an actress. And oh, amazing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So she so she's down in LA. So that's like, okay. You gotta so check you're out. reliving all this check good out and Bailey the good Corman. and the bad. You know what yes. I mean? <laughs> yeah. Check out Bailey Corman. Okay. <laughs> Keep an well, eye out for her. <laughs> she'll probably be in something very soon, I imagine. Right. Well, she's been working. She's been working yeah. a lot, but you know, ever since COVID, it's been hard. Of so course. we'll She's got, she's got stuff on the black burner here. So hopefully. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Jennifer, for doing this. This has been awesome to connect with you and to talk to you all these years later because I've been a fan forever. So uh, just thank you so much. Well, thank you. I so appreciate you having me and, uh, and this was fun and you're terrific. Thank you. Thank so you much. so much. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.